what is up YouTube and welcome to another episode of the series Kubernetes in the cloud. Today's cloud is going to be Google Cloud. If Google is not your cloud, feel free to follow along anyway and learn about the benefits of running Kubernetes in Google Cloud. I'll be making a video on Microsoft Azure, Amazon AWS, and DigitalOcean as well. And let me know down in the comments if there's any other cloud providers you'd like me to cover. And without further ado, let's go. Alright, so let's break it down. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to need an account. So we're going to go head over to Google and create a free Google Cloud account. This will give us access to some free minutes and also Google's free tier for compute. The next thing we're going to do is take a look at the CLI, the command line interface for working with Google Cloud. We're going to go in, log in, and then what we're going to do is use the CLI to create something called a project now in google cloud a project is a group of resources basically everything you do in google cloud you do against the project project al allows us to house all sorts of users permissions so you can basically create a project for production you can have a project for staging you can have a project for development so this is basically our billing our users and also the products that we want to use now it's also important to note that everything in a project has to be turned on through an API. For example, Compute as well as GKE, Google Kubernetes Engine, are APIs that are by default turned off for the project we create. So what we're gonna need to do is we have to go and enable these APIs. So in our project, we're gonna enable GKE and we're gonna enable the Compute project. Then we're going to use the CLI to spin up a Kubernetes inside this project. And we're also gonna use Kubernetes to create one virtual machine worker node for our project. So what we want to do is head over to Google Cloud website and you'll see they have a free tier where we can have access to always free products with monthly limits. We can also use our free account to access the free tier, which is going to give us the availability of um, free machines. So small virtual machines that we can attach to our Kubernetes cluster. So you're going to want to come into here and click get started for free. And then what you're going to want to do is you want to go through the sign up process of trying out Google Cloud for free. This will give you $300 free credit and access to all the platform products and what we want to do after this is we want to go ahead and make sure that we clean up everything when we're done so that there's no resources dangling that they might charge us for now part of this process google will also ask you for credit card information this is normal every cloud provider will ask you to add credit card information because they use this to prevent fraud and they want to make sure that you are who you say you are now, for those of you who are new to this channel, everything I do is on GitHub. So I have this whole series um, on GitHub for you to follow along. So you can go to the Docker development YouTube series. Down here, I have a Kubernetes folder and all the cloud providers are in here. So we're going to take a look at Google and I have the getting started guide, which is this page right here. Everything that I'm about to go through is all documented in here. So you can follow along. So check it out the links down below. So we're going to get started with the Google Cloud CLI. I prefer to use Docker to install all of these utilities. It makes it really easy, meaning I don't have to install the utilities and all its dependencies on my local machine. So let's go take a look at Docker Hub. We have the Google Cloud SDK. Now there's a bunch of things in here, a lot of documentation on how to use it, but it's actually very simple. So all we're going to do is we're going to paste this command down below. It's going to say Docker run interactively. We're going to mount all the source code into the container and we're going to set a working directory we're also going to run bash this is going to give us the ability to run commands inside of the container and we're going to use this specific version of the cli so let's go ahead and press enter and now we're in the container you can see all the folders that are represented on the left are now inside here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to say cd i'm going to change to that kubernetes folder and then inside there i'm going to change to google and if i do ls you can see we have the getting started guide right here so what we can do now is say g cloud and we have the cli ready to go so now just to give you an idea of google cloud all the products are basically listed here so we can access the alpha version of the api the beta products all the products google has to offer today we're going to take a look at g cloud and we're specifically going to take a look at containers so if we type that we can see that we can build 
containers. We have access to clusters such as Kubernetes clusters. We have images, so image registries. We can add node pools to clusters. A um, bunch of cool things we can do. So in this demo, we're going to take a look at clusters. So we're going to say Google Cloud container clusters and you can see here are all the operations we can do we can create a cluster delete a cluster describe we can get credentials of an existing one to get a cube config so we can sign in and we can also resize update and upgrade so the first thing we're going to need to do is authenticate with google set up our project and then we can start looking at what it takes to deploy a cluster now logging into google cloud is very straightforward we have this g cloud auth login command that we can paste in here and what that is going to do is that's going to give us a temporary link that we can grab then you're going to want to go to the browser paste that link and follow the prompts to sign in with Google. Then once you have done that, Google will give you a temporary link, a temporary code that you can come back into here in the verification area, paste it, and you're now logged into Google successfully. Then what you can do is you can actually set your, um, your CLI to point to a specific project. Now remember a project is basically a housing of everything to do with Google. So the Kubernetes cluster we're gonna create, if we wanna provision some users, if we wanna set up security policies and all that stuff, it's all tied to a project. That allows us to have separate projects for different environments like production, staging and development. And we can also associate that project with separate billing. So you can tie up specific credit cards to specific project so you can use the G cloud projects list command to list out all the projects you have access to what we're gonna do is we're gonna say G cloud projects create so we're gonna copy this one paste that and we're gonna run that command now you'll see that I've already got that project um, already created and then we what we're gonna do is run the next command which is G cloud config set project and then set it to the project name this means that any command we run will go basically be executed against that project ID so you want to make sure you're always pointing to the right project so that you don't accidentally play with production or you know a, an environment that you didn't intend to play with now the other note I made here is about enabling API's for your project you may be prompted to enable APIs in the Google console for projects in order to proceed. So basically every product in Google needs to be enabled for a specific project. That prevents users from just going in and just using all the different products that you might not have intended to use. So in our example here, for your project, you might be prompted to enable the API for, com for compute because we're gonna be using virtual machines as well as GKE. So you might get prompted for that. When you do, just say yes. Now, before we continue with creating our cluster, we have to know what virtual machine sizes we wanna add in our cluster. Now, we can always add node pools later on with different machine types, but we wanna make sure we select the right one to get started. So if you go over here, I've, I've created a link to this document, but this is the machine types that Google give you access to. So you have like all different types of machines and they're basically all have different purposes. So you have like general purpose, you have memory optimized, you have compute optimized um, and different types of machines. They, they give you the whole breakdown here of what they are. So you can figure out, do you need a lot of CPU? Do you need a lot of memory? And you can go ahead and pick the right machine for the right job. In this demo, we're just gonna take one of the free tier or one cheap machine and use that just to um, show you how Google Kubernetes works. The other very useful part, um, and I've documented it here, is you can use the CLI to grab the machine types. So you can say G Cloud Compute Machine Types List and we can send that to a to a log file remember some of the machines are different between different data centers so this is going to give us a full region list of all the machines available in every type of region so now that that's done you should see it um, file here called machine types and feel free to spend some time and go through this list you can see these this is the name of the machine the zone that it's available at how much cpu and how much memory it has and whether it's deprecated or not now in my example i'm just going to use a machine in Australia so it's closer to to my region and the other thing you might want to do is also see what version of Kubernetes is available in what region so if you decide that okay I want to deploy my Kubernetes cluster in Australia you need to make sure that the version of Kubernetes you want is available in Australia you can do that with the G cloud container get server config command and we pass in the zone of the the region we want 
So based on the machine types, I said I want Australia Southeast. So I'm going to run that and it's going to go ahead and fetch all the different Kubernetes versions. And we can see here that it has different versions for the masters and different versions for the node. So in my one, I'm just going to take the newer version that they have. I'm going to take 1.16.8 and I'm going to use that for my Kubernetes cluster. Now I've also documented here a command that you might want to read through just for your own interest. It's called gcloud container clusters create. It's basically just the help document for the create command for creating Kubernetes clusters. This is an in-depth um, self-documented CLI. It's going to tell you what every single field means. So if you want to go ahead and customize and maybe you want to drop the Kubernetes cluster in a specific virtual network of your existing infrastructure, you can go ahead and do that here. So you can see here, we have the ability to specify quite a lot of things, additional zones, um, the cluster version, we can disable add-ons if we want, we can specify the disk size of our nodes, the machine types we want to use, and whether we want to enable some of the built-in endpoints and logging and monitoring um, specified for Google Cloud. We can pass in node labels, we can pass in the subnet network. If we want to put this, um, a container engine into a specific subnet so our nodes running in that subnet we can do that but feel free to have a read um, read through for all of the different things you can do here so we're going to specify cluster version in our one because we want to deploy a specific version of kubernetes we want to be explicit the other thing i also like to do is explicitly define how much disk i want because in the past i found that cloud providers sometimes gives you very little disks and with docker if you're going to have a lot of docker images um, you might have to end up cleaning it up yourself especially if your if the cloud provider gives you like a 30 or 40 gig um, disk which is not really good enough for docker images so in this example i'm going to keep it really simple I just say gcloud container clusters create i pass the name of the cluster so in this we have already decided on our kubernetes version we're going to run we've also decided on the disk size um, i'm going to run a single instance then i'm going to pick an e2 small series a very small machine just for this example and i'm just going to disable um, the third party monitoring and logging and endpoints um, because i just really don't need that for this demo and I'm gonna say I want my nodes deployed in Australia Southeast, so in my local Kubernetes region. Then I'm gonna go ahead and paste that. And this will take roughly about five minutes to, to run. We can see now we're creating a cluster. So if you head over to the Google Cloud console, they have a very cool UI showing all the products on the left-hand side. Now we are going to use the compute engine and they also have Kubernetes engines. So if we click into that, we can now see a list of our clusters that's available for our account. So we can see here we have GKE getting started. This is our cluster in Australia Southeast being created with one node. So feel free to jump into this and have a look around and see everything you can do. It's very, very cool. Um, they give you all the cluster details here. You can add node pools, you can connect, you can duplicate. Um, it also shows you the workload. So once we spin up some workloads, they'll appear in here and also services and ingress. So if we add a load balancer, which we're going to do as well, it'll appear into here. We can look at like different storage options. And there's, there's quite a lot. So I'm going to give you the time to go through all of this stuff um, and familiarize yourself and just have a play around. So you can see here now we're in business. Our cluster is ready. It's all up and running, all good. If we click into it, nodes, we can see our node is up and running and ready, all ready to schedule some jobs on it. And we can also see the command line has come back with all the information saying it's all good. We're ready to go. Now, how do you access the cluster? Now, to access a Kubernetes cluster, you need what's called a kube config file. If you want more information on how to configure kubectl and things like that, have a look at the links down below to my Kubernetes development guide where I go through this stuff in detail. The first thing I'm going to do because I'm running in a container is I'm just going to copy these commands to get kubectl installed. So I'm just going to run curl. That's going to go ahead and pull the kubectl binary off the internet. And kubectl is the command line tool that we use to interface with Kubernetes. So then I'm going to apply execution rights to it and I'm going to move it to local bin. That means we now have access to kubectl. So we're all good to go. Now to get a kube config for our cluster, we have to run the gcloud container clusters get credential command. And we're going to pass in our cluster name and the zone of our Kubernetes cluster. 
So I'm going to go ahead and paste that there. That's going to go ahead and fetch the cube config for our cluster. And if you want to take a look at it, I've put a command here just to copy it from its default location into the current folder. And that'll spit it out right over here. So you can click it and you can have a look at it um, and see what it looks like. So the first command that we can do is cube ctl get nodes. We run that command. That's going to go off and give us our node. So now we have a Google Kubernetes engine up and running with one VM attached to it. So just to give you guys an example, I'm just going to say CD dot dot and I'm going to deploy a bunch of workloads here. Now, for those of you who followed my Kubernetes development guide, I, I have a, a, to, a complete series on how to work with Kubernetes. So installing it on Mac OS and Windows um, Docker, how to configure kubectl, how to deploy. So deployments, config maps. I also um, cover ingresses, secrets, and services. I've pasted a bunch of examples you can run. So the first thing you do is you have to go one directory up because we were in this Google folder. And then you're going to want to go ahead and create a namespace. A namespace in Kubernetes is what's going to house all our resources together. So we're going to create a namespace. Then we're going to create a config map and a secret. We're also going to then create a deployment inside there, which is going to consume the config. And then we're going to deploy a service, which is going to expand expose our application and this is just the hello world application example so the first thing we do is we say kubectl apply um, inside the example app namespace we're going to create a, a secret so to take a look at that on the side here if you're interested it's a secret.yaml so this is what a secret looks like in kubernetes so we're going to go ahead and create that then the next example is just how to deploy a config map so in case our application needs a config file, you can take a look at what that looks like as well. I have a config map.yaml. So this is just our application requiring some config. And then last but not least, I'm going to apply the deployment file. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. What that's going to do, if we take a look at the deployment folder, um, that's going to deploy an application, just an application called example app. And we're going to run two copies. We're going to run two replicas of our application. We're going to run, this is just a hello world Python application. And we're going to tell it what port we want to expose, so port 5000. You can also add a liveliness probe telling Kubernetes how to monitor your application. And if the liveliness probe doesn't respond, the application will automatically restart. We can also specify some limits, so limits on CPU and memory. And here we just mount in our secret and our config for the application. We can then do kubectl in the example namespace. We can say get pods and we can see now we have two pods running in our application. Now, how do we um, expose this application to the public? That can be done through an ingress and a service. Um, if you're not familiar with ingresses, ingress is basically like a proxy. If you have multiple things you want to run in a Kubernetes cluster, have a look at the links down below. I have covered several ingress tutorials as well. But in this series here, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to apply what's called a service of type load balancer. So I'm going to go ahead and apply in the example app namespace a service.yaml and if we take a look at the service.yaml we can see that it is just a service its type is load balancer so kubernetes is cloud native meaning it's going to go over to the cloud provider in this case it's going to be google and it's going to ask for a load balancer to be issued so this time if we say kubectl get service we can see now that we have a service and we have a pending external ip so kubernetes is going off to google and say hey i want a load balancer it's doing whatever it takes to get a load balancer up and if we keep refreshing this at some point we will get an external ip here so we can access our application if we head over to the console we can confirm this by going to services and ingresses and we can see that this example service has been created it has an endpoint over here as well if we click that we can say yep and there we go hello world is up and running we can also refresh this command here and we'll see that kubernetes also tells us the external ip that that service is exposed and and the last command you don't just want to walk away here because you'll probably end up spending money if the stuff just keeps running so you want to run the cleanup step so what we're going to do is say gcloud container clusters delete and we're going to delete this cluster from the zone so go ahead and paste that command and that might take several minutes to to finish up we're just going to say yes 
and that is going to go ahead and delete the cluster as well as the load balancer your project will still remain there if you want to play around with more um, of the google cloud products now i know this was a very simple hello world application that we deployed but the whole purpose of this video is to keep the deployment and stuff very simple so we can focus on what it takes to bootstrap and get a kubernetes cluster up and running in google as a cloud provider remember to check out the videos on azure DigitalOcean, as well as amazon i'll put the links down below and if there's any other stuff you'd like me to cover in the future feel free to let me know down below in future videos we'll be taking a look at, at ci cd pipelines and multiple different versions of open source ci cd pipelines to deploy real life applications into a kubernetes cluster in the cloud like google kubernetes engine so i hope you guys enjoyed that video i hope it was useful like and subscribe and until next time peace